Hello and welcome back to Biber Hunter Scale Models. If you are interested in figure painting, this video might be interesting for you, because I want to show how I painted this beautiful figure by Dynamo Models. So please get comfortable and let's get started. This is the figure this video is all about, the French commando Philippe Kiefer who landed on Sword Beach on D-Day. The details are super fine like sculpted patches, the knife on the leg back or the rope around his neck. And it comes with two heads and some additional stuff like a backpack and ammunition bags. As the figure was really clean produced, there was only minimum cleaning necessary, like removing some casting residues with a hobby knife. I then started to glue the parts to the figure, as it's always good to glue as much as possible before painting, because I don't want to super glue residues on painted parts. The fitting was great and there were no problems. The only real challenge was the arm with the Thompson MP and I decided to glue it to the figure now, so I could arrange it and fill a small gap with putty. With that I accepted the painting to be a bit more tricky in this area later, but nothing that can't be done. For better handling while painting I drilled holes into the feet and glued some 0.5mm wire into them. Like that I could easily place it onto a cork and into a painting handle. Next I mixed me some green stuff putty, wetted it with tap water for better handling and filled the gap on the arm. This extra effort is always worth doing on every figure as the base painted figure is looking strange with bigger or smaller gaps on arms, shoulders or elsewhere. Then it was time to clean the figure in soapy water. This is to remove dust from sanding or cleaning and grease from my fingers from handling the figure while building. And using my airbrush I sped up the drying time by blowing it dry. When it was completely dry I could prime it using Mr. Mahogany Surfacer diluted with Mr. Leveling Thinner. I applied it with my airbrush in several thin layers until I was satisfied with the coverage and ended up with a tasty brown layer. Like always on one colored uniforms I decided to do a pre-coloring instead of a pre-shading as this gives me a perfect starting point for later brush painting. And because I don't have paints for British uniforms, which these French commandos wore on D-Day, I had to mix me my own version. This was the progress of learning by doing and the reason why I ended up with this wild formula. This tone was then sprayed onto the whole figure as the darker part of the pre-coloring covering it completely. I then lightened my base paint up and sprayed the lighter version from above in a flat angle. Like this the lighter paint only hit the raised areas of the figure and the deeper spots and crevices remained dark. And this is the result after the airbrush stage, so let's grab some brushes. As there are always ways to improve results, I wanted to refine the shadows and highlights and to start with the shadows I used dark brown paint and diluted it with retarder. This diluted paint was then applied into the darker places like folds and crevices where the shadowed areas would be. And because the paint was diluted with retarder I could use a soft brush to blend the edges smooth into the previously sprayed paint. Depending on how dark I wanted the refined areas to be, I applied several layers or varied the paint retarder ratio. And as I had the dark paint in my palette anyway, I started to paint the seams and outline details. 
but I already knew here that I most likely had to repaint it later because of the following steps. But this gave me a better understanding for the figure's later look. After shadows came light and to repaint the lighter areas I used a lighter paint to redefine the raised areas and make them brighter. The paint again was diluted with retarder and because of this I could easily blend them into the uniform. And it stays more translucent because of the retarder, what gives the base paint a chance to show through and stay visible. I used different sized and shaped brushes for blending, depending on the area and the result I was looking for. The brushes can be dry for blending or moistened with retarder to reactivate the paint and make it workable again for removing or correcting the shape. When I was satisfied with the contrast between light and shadows, I made a few glazes with the base paint to unify the look of the uniform and form smoother color transitions between the just painted areas and the base layer. Here it is important to remove the pooled paint with a dry brush from the crevices as it would cover the shadow paints when it would dry here. It's best to unload the brush on a piece of paper towel before touching the figure to reduce the amount of diluted paint flooding the figure. Like I expected, the glazes toned down the seams and outlines, so I had to repaint them. But that was not a big deal, as the paint again was diluted with retarder and therefore flows nicely into the crevices or can easily be removed with a retarder moistened brush when a mistake was made. And with that the basic uniform was done and I could concentrate on the details and bring some variation and life into the figure. For that I started with base painting every detail like belts, ammunition bags and the backpack. I am very sorry when sometimes the video quality isn't very satisfying. It's just a really tough job painting these small parts and details, stay in focus and have a good light. Sometimes I only realize that the video material isn't perfect when I start editing and then the parts are obviously finished. With black paint I base painted the nicely sculpted patches and all metal parts like the MP or the knife, buckles and stuff. The rope, which is also really greatly detailed, was base painted with dark brown paint. And then the raised spots were painted with the lighter paint. Like this I already had shadows in the deeper areas and the rope looked good to me. Needless to say that these are jobs for the good brushes. I like. The boots were base painted with a very dark grey. Followed by a light wash to highlight their texture and details. I then mixed a lighter grey into the dark one and diluted with retarder started to paint the raised areas of the boots to imply some highlights. I here made several runs with more lightened up paint to become lighter and lighter with the painted areas becoming smaller and smaller. And finished it with pure light grey for the highest highlights. And again unified the surface with a black glaze what also gave some depth. Of course all details and equipment which were just base painted by now needed some more contrast too. I here again used with retarder diluted dark brown paint and applied it into crevices and folds just like I did it on the uniform before but in a smaller scale. Again my blending brushes were very helpful for blending the shadows into the surfaces. This dark brown paint is a great all rounder when it comes to implying shadows or outlining details and seams. Crossing belts, deep folds, fake shadows and deeper parts all was done with this one paint. 
And again, when shadows are painted, light has to be painted too. For that I used lightened up base paint and applied it, you guessed it, diluted with retarder. I can't say it often enough, it's just way more easy to blend it into the surface, no hard edges or tight marks from fast drying paints and a more translucent coverage letting the base paint shine through. Obviously all raised parts and areas were painted and that resulted in a nice contrast between lighter and darker places making the figure look sharp and crispy. And here too the parts were finished with glazes in the specific base paint. For the wood grain of the Thompson MP, I started with a dark brown base layer and then tried around with using different browns and earthen tones to paint very fine strains implying the wood grain. Here too learning by doing was the motto of the day and I ended up mixing various tones and doing glazes to unify all the different tones. The wooden handle of the, I think it's a shovel, was painted in the same way but with a more lighter color palette, implying a different type of wood. And these are the results of my wooden experiments. With dark steel pigments applied by brush, I turned the black base paint into the required metal optic. Although a bit messy, this brings a very subtle effect, not too overwhelming. The knife was also treated by using a silicone brush to be more precise and polish the surface slightly. And to turn down and correct the shape of the shiny areas a bit, I used a black lace, what gave the metal parts a nice subtle finish. Whenever details like patches are actually sculpted and not only implied, I'm looking forward to painting them. After base painting the patches earlier, I now had to paint the raised areas and I here tried to hit only the waste areas with a slightly loaded brush, almost like dry brushing but with more paint. Of course in this scale some details like the commando lettering can only be implied, but the France lettering is actually readable. And of course it's always possible and no shame to make corrections with the base paint, especially with tiny details in this scale. And with that the uniform was done for now and I could start the next chapter, skin tones. But first I quickly painted the eyes white, so I could correct the shape later with the skin tones if I was too messy here. The pupils will be painted later when the head is glued in place, so I get a better understanding for the viewing direction. Could apply the skin tone base layer in several thin applications so the paint isn't thick enough to cover the nice facial details. When this layer was dry, I made a wash with a dark reddish brown tone to let it flow into the deeper areas and set in the first shadows, and also gave the skin a darker look. I here too used a dry brush to make sure the paint isn't pooling too much and covering details. I then again started with painting the shadowed areas. The retarder diluted paint was applied very thin. The brush unloaded on a paper towel, so only very small amounts of paint were applied. Like this I had better control over the paint on the small face and could more easily blend them into the base layer. My smaller blending brush was moistened with retarder to reactivate the paint and the bigger one was dry to blend it. And the shadow paint was applied everywhere where shadows would be in the face. The next step was to bring some light into the face 
and I started with a medium light tone and painted all exposed and raised areas which would be hit by light. Again very small amount of paint applied, blended and worked into the face. I can't say it enough how important it is to not overload the brush with paint and then have to deal with too much paint covering too much ground. I here worked my way around the face and worked out the lighter areas. And as paints in general always look stronger when wet, I repeated the areas where I wanted more coverage. The second highlight was painted with more lightened paint and again the lighter the paint became, the smaller the painted areas were. And as a result the lightest highlight paint was only used in very small areas in very little amounts to point out details like the forehead, the ears or the nose. And to unify all layers and bring the highlights back from a whitish look into a more flashy direction, I made a glaze with the base paint, again very strong diluted with retarda and unlike on the uniform parts with a brush not loaded with paint but razor dry. To bring the face even more into a lifelike flashy direction, I applied a very thin red layer on some areas of the face. This would be mainly into the shadows, the nose, around the eyes, the lips and most important the cheeks. Here again my brush was unloaded with only a small amount of paint in it. And again blending is the most important tool to blend these thin layers into the skin. To imply a 5 o'clock or bearded shadow, I applied an even thinner blue layer. This has to be done very carefully because when this layer is overdone, the face can quickly turn too blue. And as this figure is supposed to show a soldier who just landed on D-Day, the bearded shadow would be kept very subtle. If you are aiming for a stronger effect, I would recommend applying several thin layers instead of one too thick. Applying this blue layer around the eyes can be used to imply fatigue, but as this soldier just landed I again kept it subtle here. And as a last step I painted a very thin yellow layer on the upper part of the head, so mainly the forehead. Like this I created the impression of sun or daylight shining on the head from above and make it more vivid. And with that the skin tones are done. I hope this passage made somehow sense, at least I am pleased with the result myself, what is never a bad thing. Of course skin tones on the body can't be forgotten and I painted the hands with the same color palette like the face, always using the paints on the hands when I was done applying the actual layer on the face. And painting fingernails using the highest highlights. Painting the hair was the next point on the to-do list and I started with a dark brown base layer. The next step was painting a warmer brown tone over almost the whole hair part except the areas where the darkest shadows would be. This warm tone would be the base layer. To add the first highlight I used a lighter brown tone and painted it more into the upper area of the hair where it would be hit by light. And I added strains here and there going down into the darker area to break the edge of the light part. And then lightened the light brown even more and worked this part into the area where more light would fall onto the head. This was applied not covering but more and more in strains with vertical brush strokes. 
And one last highlight, finish the lightest hair area, only applied in a very small amount in a very small area. I then again toned down the whitish look of the highlights with a glaze in the warm brown tone, what also helped to unify the surface. And a glaze with a dark brown shadow paint in the lower area reinforced the shadows slightly. And that completes the hair and with that the head. I could now remove the head from the torture stake and after a test fit glue it to the body with a drop of super glue. With the head glued I could now add the pupils and I herefor use dark brown oil paint. It's just super easy to make a small dot of oil paint with a pointy triple zero brush into the eye. And with a also fine thinner moistened brush I could now correct the size and shape or remove it completely if it came out useless and start all over again immediately. Like this there is almost no way to fail as it feels like having endless tries until I was satisfied. Using acrylic paints here would have made this task a bit more delicate. And although not Kelvin 10 like I am very happy with the result. With paints grey oil paint I then gave the uniform and equipment the last finishing touches. This paint is great for adding additional shadows because its dark grey nature gives the shadows a nice subtle darkness without turning them into a muddy direction what can happen when overdoing it with dark brown paint. So I reworked and improved areas like the beret or the straps and belts where subtle shadows were appreciated. I also applied this paint glaze like over the boots because this layer of oil paint gave the dark leather some more depth and an almost leather like surface. As good and sharp as the uniform looked now, a soldier can't be clean in battle. So I used these two enamel products and made the uniform a bit more dirty and weathered. I applied the two tones slightly diluted onto the places where the uniform should be dirty from crawling through the sand. And then used the different brushes for blending them into each other and into the figure's surface. And as a really last step I grabbed me a pencil or more fancy graphite stick and went over all metal edges of the Thompson MP to highlight them depending from which angle you look at the figure. And gave all black based metal parts like belt buckles or buttons a turn and like this converted black plastic into shiny used metal parts. And with that we finally made it through this video. I hope this video wasn't too boring and interesting to watch. I really appreciate if you made it until here. If you liked what you saw, please consider supporting me by subscribing. As I was standing on Swart Beach at the Philipp Kiefer Memorial in our Normandy vacation in 2022, this figure was somehow special to me and I hope I did it justice. At least I can say I am very happy with the result and if you like the figure check out Dynamo models for this or more great figures, busts and more. So thanks again very much for watching, stay safe and goodbye.